Um, why did Jesus uh, say that we should forgive someone 70 times 7? And uh, what did he mean? What did Jesus mean when he said that uh, we should be forgiving 70 times 7? Has this ever been a problem to you and uh, you're confused? What, what did he really mean? Does it mean that when you forgive 490 times, um, then we are cool? We are, what, what exactly is he meaning? And that's what I want to speak about today. Now, starting off, we have to understand that Jesus said we are to forgive others 70 times 7. And uh, this was in response to Peter's question. Peter asked a question in Matthew 18, 21 to 22. That then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. <laughs> this, is an, this, this is a nail on the coffin. Seventy times seven. It's like Peter was thinking, oh yeah, that's okay, because the law, <laughs> you know, thinking about the law and uh, what I'm going to tell you just uh, in a bit. Huh? But then, Jesus just says 70 times 7. And uh, to fully understand what Jesus was saying, we must look at the context of the whole chapter. Because Jesus was speaking not only about forgiving one another, but about the Christian character, both in and out of the church. The, basically, the admonition to forgive our brother 70 times 7. All these followed Jesus' disclosure on, dis on, uh, on discipline in the church. Now, let's check Matthew 18, 15 to 20. Uh, this is where Jesus lays down the rules for restoring a sinning brother. Matthew 18, uh, 15 to 20. Okay? How you should discipline uh, a sinning brother or restore? Jesus says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. So the first thing is, if someone sins against you, go and tell him alone. Okay? If he shall hear thee, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear you, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, Every word may be established, you see. The second thing is, take one person or two people to go and talk to him. Witnesses. But they're only one or two, okay? Don't make like a whole crowd. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church, okay? The next thing is, tell it to the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican, because you can't uh, start arguing with the publicans and heathens and, you know, telling them, oh, you people, you, you have done this, you, you lied yesterday. They, they, they are liars every day. So why would, just let them be. If someone is a, a liar all through, you, you can't keep on telling, oh, you are a liar. Yeah, I know I'm a liar. So, you know, that's, that's what heathen people and publicans and sinners out there are like. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Okay? Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them. For my Father which is in heaven, oh, of my Father which is in heaven, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So you see, Jesus has already spoken about this. And uh, we have to understand, Peter, when Peter was asking Jesus about forgiveness, he was wishing to appear especially forgiving and benevolent. And uh, he, was, he, he was wishing just that, that kind of uh, benevolence while he was asking Jesus about forgiveness. And uh, how forgiveness is to be offered seven times. But uh, 
you we have to look behind and see the Jewish rabbis at that time they taught that forgiving someone more than three times was unnecessary citing uh, they used to cite um, uh, stories about Amos you remember in the book of Amos 1 3 to 13 okay Amos 1 uh, 3 uh, to around 13, I'll, I'll just uh, ch check a, a little bit here. That says the Lord, for three transgressions of Damascus and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they have uh, threshed Gilad with threshing instruments of iron. You see, they're looking at this. Three transgressions and the four, I will not, I will turn away punishment. Uh, I, I will not turn away punishment. So it's like three times and then the fourth time you punish. So, so that's what uh, these guys were thinking about. And that's what Peter was trying to say when he was coming with this. He was trying to explain. You see, uh, Jesus, is it only seven times? Seven times? Because there was the three times which they knew. And then there was, according to the law, and things like that. It was, you know, the law says don't, <laughs> don't forgive all the time. You know, stone people, those who are uh, immoral, stone them, those who are doing this, do... You, you see? But now Jesus is coming with another rule here. Where God is talking about for, for, forgiving 100% or 70 times 7. And you see, because of that, this whole aspect of looking at uh, 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 this issue of how God was forgiving three times and then the fourth time, he would not turn the punishment away. Peter, he was thinking, now, if I ask Jesus about this, is he going to confirm the same? Now, you have to understand, by offering forgiveness, more than double of that of the Old Testament uh, uh, e example, Peter, perhaps, was expecting extra commendation from the Lord, because of, uh, yeah, 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 that's how it's supposed to be. No, but Jesus said something different. When Jesus responded that forgiveness should be offered 490 times, 490 times, far beyond that which Peter was proposing, it must have shunned, uh, stunned the disciples who were listening. Although they had been with Jesus for some time, they were still thinking in the limited terms of the law rather than in the unlimited terms of grace. You see, you have to understand and check on what angle are you checking the word of God? Are you checking it in the angle of the law? Because the law says, eh? the law says, calculate. But Jesus says, it's unconditional. Think about it. If Jesus could have forgiven you 490 times, how many times have you sinned since uh, you got saved? How many times have you told a lie? How many times have you done something wrong? How many times? Are you seeing the picture? And uh, sometimes when we sit down and keep on saying, oh, maybe I should do it only I calculate. You're thinking it in a carnal way, in a way like the law says. And by saying that we are to forgive those who sin again and start 70 times 7, Jesus was not limiting forgiveness to 490 times, a number that is just uh, for all practical purposes beyond counting. Of course, you can't count it. Christians with forgiving hearts not only do not limit the number of times they forgive they continue to forgive with as much grace as a thousand times as they do the first time anytime you remember the bible tells us that the, the, the forgiveness of god is unconditional jesus gave us unconditional uh, forgiveness he did not tell us that I'm forgiving you until you do this and then I, I come back. No. Jesus has forgiven us forever. Salvation is forever. He's not forgiving us and telling us, okay, I'm coming to pick it up again. Just the same way people say, I forgive you, but I will not forget. My friend, to be a Christian, it means to forgive the inexcusable. Because God has forgiven you in the excusables. Okay? God has forgiven you in all things. So forgive people in all things. Are you getting the point here? Okay. Don't limit how many times. Christians are the only capable people who can be able or who are capable to forgive or to have this type of forgiveness because the spirit of God lives within us. 
And it is he who provides the ability to offer forgiveness over and over and over just as God forgives us over and over and over. Okay? There's a parable, if you understand this parable, of the unforgiving servant which was given by, uh, given by Jesus. Now, this unforgiving servant parable, this parable follows directly after this 70 uh, times 7 uh, speech, driving home the point that if we are forgiven the enormous debt of sin against the Holy God, how much more should we be eager to forgive those who sin against us, who are just as sinful as, as they, you know, as, as we were, or uh, as others, or as anyone out there? How much more should we forgive, thinking that Jesus forgave us? You see, Paul parallels this example in Ephesians 4.2, where he admonishes us to forgive one another, okay? Paul tells us, guys, come on, guys, please, forgive each other as Christ forgave you. See here. And be ye kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Now, is Paul telling us to forgive 490 times? No. Clearly, forgiveness is not to be meted out in a limited fashion, but is to be abundant, overflowing, and available to all, just as the measureless grace of God is poured upon us. Christ has forgiven you. And he tells us, please be kind to one another. Forgive one another as Christ has forgiven you. Okay? Forgive each other. So if you're out there and someone does something wrong to you, you should always look back and ask yourself, how much did Christ forgive me? How many things have I done in the past and Jesus has forgiven you, me with an endless forgiveness? If you're forgiven and uh, forgiveness ends at some point, then that means uh, it's not uh, eternal salvation. It is conditional salvation. On a condition that you don't repeat it again, then uh, I will forgive you. But if salvation is eternal, not conditional, then my friends, as you forgive others, forgive them for real and 100%. Don't say, I forgive but I'll not forget. Let's learn that example. Let's be able to understand that when Jesus says, forgive 70 times 7, he basically meant, forgive as I forgave you. Okay? And if you're out there and you still don't know the gospel, you don't know that you are forgiven. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> if you don't know if you are forgiven, my friends, you have to understand this fact. You are forgiven by Jesus. The only thing which is sending people to hell is not because they were not forgiven. It's because they have never believed that they have been forgiven. The gospel is here for all of us. And it's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And you have to understand three facts before you get saved. One, understand that you're lost. Number two, hear the gospel. Number three, understand the gospel. Number four, believe the gospel. And number five, confess what you have believed to God in a prayer. Okay? So there are five points for you to be saved. First, understand that Jesus died for your sins. And how he died? He died by shedding his blood because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17, 11. And Jesus shed that blood for you. So that if you believe in him, you will not perish, but you will have everlasting life. So you understand and then you believe. And then after that, confess it to Christ. Just tell him, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. You were buried and you rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I believe you. I believe these words. And I receive that atonement, that payment of sin by faith. Be my Lord and Savior. My friends, if you have understood that and you have believed that, my friends, you are saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And also you can subscribe. 
to watch more videos and also hit the notification button so that you don't miss any new video which we post every day and in the description below we have a couple of other videos other channels that uh, we also post in beetroot and other places just go and check out and uh, be blessed god bless you and have a good time